Economic Development and Tourism will now come to order. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Councilor Kadeem? Here. Councilor Long? Here. First item on our, our agenda is citizen input. Sign up. Is there anybody that ha has citizen input? Item two are the urban renewal plans. Item two A. Ordered that the city council hereby approve the attached downtown urban renewal plan for submission to the Department of Housing and Community Development. And we have asked for the consultants and um, representation from the Redevelopment Authority as, long, as well as our city planner and city administrator. Would you want to go? Everyone would just take a moment to introduce themselves. My name is Emily Ennis. Is that on? Just push it up. It's up. My name is Emily Ennis. I'm the director of planning for Harriman and the lead consultant on the two urban renewal plans. Um, my name is Bill Roth. I'm the planning director for the city of Fall River. My name is Kara O'Connell. I'm the RDA chair. Michelle Dion. RDA member. Kathy Vivera, city administrator. And did you want to start with the your highlights? Yes, Councillor, thank you very much. Um, I think you last met on this in December. Yes. And we had made a previous presentation to the city council in June. So I'm going to run through just some highlights of the plan for those who aren't familiar, who may be listening in, and then talk about just a few of the changes that have been made since you last met. So we're talking about two urban renewal plans today. One is for the waterfront and one is for the downtown. In terms of the waterfront, we really looked at two key pieces of that. The first was the proposed realignment of Route 79 and the fact that that would create effectively 10 acres of land in an area that is primarily developed next to a significant waterfront, which is a major amenity for the city. And so the idea was to be ahead of that realignment process so that the city and the RDA would be prepared to take action and uh, think cohesively about how that land could be redeveloped and integrated into the city and into the neighborhoods surrounding it. Uh, the second part of that was to understand how the entire waterfront could work together, so stretching from the Shell Oil site down to south of Braga Bridge, looking at the cultural aspect of the city, the physical aspects in terms of the waterfront and public access to it, and again, integrating the neighborhoods, uh, both uh, in terms of physical connections, um, but also creating draws that would allow people to uh, reconnect to a waterfront that they had been closed off of. Uh, in terms of the downtown, the overall idea was, of course, the revitalization of the downtown, but really looking at an organized structure that divided it into three phases, the first being uh, creating a spine and reinforcing that spine of North and South Main Streets with the City Hall as the hinge of that spine, reactivating those, uh, looking at uh, adaptive reuse and rehabilitation and eventually infill development. Then considering infill development on uh, what planners <coughs> sometimes term as missing teeth, those parcels where buildings have been removed or never developed and are not contributing uh, either uh, in terms of activity, they may be vacant lots or they may be parking lots, but they're not contributing either public spaces or active uses. And then finally, considering parts of the downtown uh, that are viable now, but in the future as the downtown changes, may also want to change. And uh, in terms of both setting up a series of actions, some regulatory, some actions that the RDA would take, and some actions that the city would take. So creating a strong implementation plan for both of those. 
In terms of changes since the December 17th meeting, um, uh, councilors, you may recall that uh, three parcels were proposed to be added to the redevelopment plan, the waterfront uh, plan. Um, we received letters uh, through the city planner's office that the uh, people who owned those parcels did object and those have not been added to the plan. Uh, subsequent to that, we received uh, a request for three separate parcels to be removed from the plan because the owners of those parcels intended to develop them according to the goals of the plans, but also uh, presumably the design guidelines and that they had, all, they had already made or planned to make applications to that effect. And so those plans, I believe you received a diagram showing which uh, parcels those are. Uh, I'll just read them out for the record. Uh, the first is N12. 0003-104 Anawan Street in 16004-115 Anawan Street and in 16001-56 Water Street. Uh, again, because these parcels are proposed to be developed in accordance with the goals of the plan, from a planning perspective, we have no objection to them being removed. Should you vote to move this forward to City Council's full vote and they vote in favor, we would then make the necessary changes to the waterfront plan to remove them uh, and reanalyze uh, some of the underlying data to uh, incorporate those removals. I think uh, that is it, unless you have any questions. Um, I will say that uh, it's been a long process, which is fair enough. Um, uh, often these processes are a little bit longer because of the nature of redevelopment plans. It's important that the public have these opportunities to listen to them. But uh, unfortunately, it also means the data is getting a little old. So in terms of submitting it to DHCD, what we're hoping is that they're willing to accept them as submitted. I think uh, there's a worry that if it goes on too much longer, they may ask us to redo do the underlying data um, because of the age. So, and with that, thank you for your time. Do you have anything that you want to? Uh, no, she's summarized everything. <laughs> and um, Kathy Ann or the Redevelopment Authority? Oh, I know, actually. Yeah, perfect. Sorry if, you, if I need to speak a little loud, slightly under the weather. I just wanted to um, say hello. Thank you for having me. And just to let you know, you know, that many other cities and towns have upgraded their urban renewal plans in the state. You have Lowell and Springfield and Worcester and Gardner and Attleboro and New Bedford. You know, a lot of cities have gone through this pro process and have had positive change in their cities. So I think that this is where we need to be. You know, it should be one of the main focus and a goal, moving the city forward, that these plans, you know, address disinvested, substantial, blighted areas and conditions in order to create the environment needed to attract and grow public and private investment. You know, if we look at what's happening down on the waterfront and in the city, I mean, even look at today's front page, you know, what, you know, the new housing that's coming to the downtown area, this can only be positive growth for the city. And this is actually probably a turning point for the city. These plans are so positive, you know, that it could help bring the city together, working, moving forward, have the city council, this board here, and the RDA all working forward and together, I think would be a wonderful thing for the city, and we should all support this and move them forward. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just also like to add a comment that um, not only do we want to work uh, with the uh, city council, we've also invited the historic commission to be involved in this plan and, and everything moving forward to make sure that there's a cohesion and um, you know when the waterfront and downtown are, are meeting, um, that everything is proper and in place, and that everybody's happy. Great. Ms. Tavares, did you have anything to add? No, I think I just want to chime in as well on the timeliness. Um, I think there has been um, an extended amount of time off to the community. I know this council and also the planning director have uh, made a number of efforts to reach out and let people know that their properties are referenced mm -hmm. within the plan. Um, so I think the time spent on that was certainly valuable, but I just want to reiterate that we are, you know, we do share a concern that at this point, if it doesn't start to move forward, we could be asked to invest additional funds in updating data, which mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to, uh, to avoid. But hopefully the council's comfortable at this position moving forward. Um, and I think it's probably worth just reiterating again, I know the concern has always been around the issue of eminent domain and taking. Um, and just a reminder, and I know the Redevelopment Authority shares this, that 
eminent domain is considered a last resort. Certainly you try to work very hard with the existing property owners to either get them to do the development or to get them to enter into a, you know, a market rate sale or development option. But uh, we, we're not really anticipating that that's going to be the first course of action, but rather a last resort in the event uh, we don't get community cooperation. But I uh, haven't seen any of that thus far, so I think that's worthy of note. I just have one question before I... Pass it to Council Kadeem. The three parcels removed <clears throat> were the ones that were added in like the last, it was right before our last meeting, correct? No, the three parcels that I just read out had been in from uh, um, probably about midway through the plan. The ones that were mentioned in December were never formally added to the plan. Okay. So they were proposed, but we did not so they, actually right, add they them. So they are also removed. out, yes. Okay. And as far as the three parcels that were removed, the ones that you gave the addresses for, were there any other objections other than those three? No, there were not. Perfect, thank you. Councilor Kadeem? So I had asked the majority of my questions the last time we met, um, just in terms of the next step of the process. Uh, mm -hmm. So this would get referred to the uh, full council and assuming approval, DHCD, is that? That is correct. So there's two things that have to happen uh, once uh, City Council approves. The uh, first thing is obviously we go back and make any changes that may happen uh, as a result of City Council's vote, which would include removing these, as I mentioned. And then there's two documents that get filed. One is the plan to DHCD for their approval. And at about the same time, we file a plan with MEPA. Um, uh, that's the ENR for me, or the ENF for MEPA. And what happens is they're reviewed pretty much simultaneously. Um, the ENF, uh, the environment, uh, environmental notification form uh, for urban renewal plans is just really, it's almost a pro forma in a way. It's letting MEPA know what's going on. And then DHCD looks to make sure that's done and then they issue their um, report. So what is it, what criteria is DHCD, um, I guess, basing their approval on? So they're looking at a couple of things. One is 760 CMR 12, which was just updated last year. And those are the regulations that govern the content of the plan and the uh, some of the format of the plan. So they've got a fairly specific outline and look, looking for that to be filled. And the other is Chapter 121B of the Massachusetts General Laws. And that's the piece that authorizes the Redevelopment Authority to undertake certain actions in response to the plan. So what we've tried to do, DHCD has to make certain findings, which are laid out in 760 CMR 12. We've tried to make that easy by uh, Point, putting a checklist in each plan for those findings and then indicating the section in which they can find that information. Okay. You had mentioned if it drags on a little bit more, the underlying data uh, might need to be updated. Mm -hmm. What exactly would be, um, I guess, considered um, old data or? So part of it is going to be uh, the inventory that we did. Uh, a lot of that is pulling in terms of uh, base data in uh, valuations, is pulling from the city assessor's data. So if that has been updated since, or if the uh, if DHCD feels that that might be a little old, that's a possibility. Some of the economic data may need to be updated um, uh, in terms of looking at the uh, market uh, context. Uh, and the demand. Um, it's known that these, uh, the type of retail and office demand we do uh, in consultation with our subconsultants is a snapshot in time, but it was sufficiently long ago that um, it's possible that they may ask for that to be updated. In terms of environmental considerations and that and the underlying infrastructure analysis, nothing has changed to my knowledge in that respect, and I wouldn't expect that to need to be done. In terms of funding, options or identifying funding sources for, for this plan? Have, have we done that? Yes, there's a section in each plan. Uh, it's actually required by DHCD. Um, I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised, they're fairly in-depth. It's required by DHCD that there be a funding plan that indicates uh, potential costs um, uh, at the level that these plans are. Some of those are clearly order of magnitude costs because they're looking, they require further study. Yeah. And then we indicate funding sources with that as well, yes. So I'll yield, then I'll make a motion to refer to full council. If you've got, do you have any questions? No, all answered. Okay. Uh, motion to refer to full council. All in favor? Oh, second. Second. Council Long's not here. 
Second. Positive. With a positive record. record. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. Do we have to do one for each? A no. and B? Yes. Yep. I just ask a quick question on, on the timeline. How, how long before we receive DHCD's approval? So they can take um, uh, up to a couple of months, but they've seen the plans before, so it's likely that um, it won't take them as long as that. Uh, I should say that uh, after City Council votes it, it remains as a draft until it receives DHCD's approval, so they have the right to ask for additional technical information, um, which obviously we would work with you to provide. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Motion to approve the December 17th, 2018 minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So voted. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.